Hey everybody, welcome to Tech Recycle, where we combine the latest neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant. In this video, we were taking a look at crucial updates to the MindLift software program. If you recall, MindLift is the home mobile neurofeedback program that I use with my clients and I've made several videos on in the past. If you wanna catch up on what I've talked about in MindLift in the past, take a look at the links below in the description for those two videos talking about the evolution of neurofeedback as well as client and provider perspectives of neurofeedback. In this video, we're going to take a look at crucial updates on both the client and the provider side of MindLift and how it makes the program that much better. In the first MindLift review video, I reviewed the history of neurofeedback and why MindLift is so important to come into the scene. Now this was a year and a half ago and the industry has already totally changed for the better. Neurofeedback companies and clinics are popping up all over and giving people training options that never before existed. In the second review video, I dived more into the specifics that providers see through the provider dashboard portal and how they can set and customize settings for neurofeedback training with their clients. Now, I do use MindLift with my own clients for their neurofeedback meditation training, and I myself have gone through three months of training as a patient myself, so I'm quite intimate with the software at this point. The new updates are both on the client and provider perspectives, and I think they're really cool. MindLift has done an excellent job in listening to both providers and clients, taking their feedback, and really incorporating it into the software for these updates. We're almost there. First of all, on the client side, there's a, now a small Venn diagram where you can actually see the individual frequencies coming in and out of the sweet spot. I can say for a fact from working with clients that this feature can be really helpful. For example, if you're trying to hit a sweet spot of concentration, you may be rewarding SMR and in inhibiting high beta. And sometimes if you're not getting positive feedback as the client, you don't know which one is out of sync. You might be too relaxed with too much theta or too intense with too much high beta. And now you can see in real time how you might alter your concentration to get in that sweet spot for the positive feedback during the neurofeedback session. For instance, in my program, we go through different meditative techniques and focus points that allow clients to influence the neurofeedback program and learn how to train their mind more effectively. So with these MindLift program settings, often you are rewarding increasing amplitude of one brainwave frequency, but also rewarding decreasing amplitude of a different brainwave frequency. So there can be multiple things going on at the same time to find the sweet spot to engage in operant conditioning to fine tune the mind during the neurofeedback, mobile neurofeedback sessions. What's interesting from a client perspective is that before you would simply see a green bar giving plus and minus to let you know if you were hitting that sweet spot or not and the game would either progress or the videos would become more opaque and higher volume so that you continue watching the video that you were watching. But what was confusing is that that green bar really only showed the combination of the different target brainwave frequencies getting into the sweet spot. What's great about the Venn diagram is that now you can actually see the individual frequencies coming in and out of the Venn diagram, allowing you to determine, well, it looks like a high beta is out of the Venn diagram, but everything else is within the sweet spot, so maybe I just need to lower my intensity a little bit, and then I'll get really good neurofeedback in the program. Or a different example would be like, oh, theta beta is going out of the Venn diagram. Maybe I need to wake myself up to get more in the zone. So each brainwave frequency is in that sweet spot and you get the most positive feedback in the program and the highest scores. Whereas before it was more guesswork about what was out of sync, now you can actually see which brainwave frequencies are going awry and correct those in real time. And what I do with my clients is use different meditative techniques to influence those different brain waves so that you can become a master over not only the neurofeedback aspect, but also your waking life as well. Now, I recently went through three months of neurofeedback training myself as a client just to get that full client experience of MindLift and see what happens over uh, weeks to months of using the program. And there was a couple of things that I really found 
uh, surprising and learn from. Um, the actual animations are nice uh, to get into and, and to learn. I'm talking about like the running aliens or the starship or any of the other animations like the fire that they have. But when you are staring at the screen for some time, it can get a little, a little dull, a little boring. And part of what I do with my clients is investigate those meditative techniques that won't make it as boring because you are experiencing such a state change on an internal level. But at the same time, it is kind of nice to be able to watch videos when you are doing the session. And that's really what I found is that I very much enjoyed watching YouTube videos, often educational YouTube videos. And the way that the neural feedback works with that is the opaqueness keeps changing. It, it'll become more translucent if you're out of sync and more opaque if you are in sync with the target brainwave frequencies. And you can really play around with the brainwave frequencies at the same time as learning. And what's nice is, is if you hit the sweet spot and you are in zone, the video goes opaque, you can continue watching the video, learning and being entertained. But at the same time, you really do feel that physiological change within your body, within your mind. Um, I definitely hit the zone a couple of times where it was like zoom. I felt like I was having a really good meditative experience. And uh, my practitioner was really targeting SMR with me. So apparently when you get into a really good SMR range, you know, I would feel these big physiological changes in me and feel really good, get like a lot of endorphins going and be incredibly focused and present and centered. So that's really what I found in doing that training program is that uh, it is nice to do the animations, but if you're doing a lot of the mind lift training, the videos can be a little bit more entertaining and more likely to allow you to be doing the program every day and not getting uh, so bored just watching the same animation all the time. And then also there are profound physiological changes within sessions that can happen with your body that feel really good if you get into the zone with these brainwave frequencies that are targeted on mind lift. Now from a provider standpoint, we have various graphs and reports that are really helpful. This not only gives the provider a bird's eye view of what's going on in regards to training the client, but it also produces beautiful reports that you can give to the client to reassure them that they are making progress and that their, their results are being tracked. It also gives them more long-term feedback on what they might want to improve in regards to their training. And then on a provider side, I can tell you that these reports that are generated through the MindLift system are really important. You know, they not only give you tools to spur conversation with your clients, but also allow your clients to feel like they are truly being tracked with their brainwave frequencies and getting different data points in their performance so that they can improve week after week. So these graphs, these uh, reports that can be generated through the MindLift system, I think have also brought a ton of value to the program. So what's really cool about all these reports from a provider perspective is that once you have a good amount of session data, you can see all kinds of comparisons of sessions, brainwave readings, subjective scoring, and other parameters that tell you about how your client is doing. Now, if you've got different sessions with different brainwave target parameters, you can click the check boxes and choose which ones you are going to include in the report. For example, you wouldn't want to show overall brainwave amplitude comparisons between two different training regimens normally, so you would just select one batch at a time to generate a report. Here we can see me unclicking attention training sessions to display only relaxation training sessions for this particular client. Now this graph is really interesting, it's symptom tracking. So as you are designing a training regimen as a provider, the program asks you specific symptoms you want to track in your client over time. It typically asks questions about certain symptoms like attention, sleep, irritability, and quite a few others, and asks the client about these symptoms every few sessions. This graph shows you how the client has answered those questions over time. Here you see a nice graph showing symptomology such as mind wandering, forgetfulness, and these are hopefully going down with time as your sessions continue. This really helps shape discussions with the client about what they're experiencing from week to week while they're going through the training program. One type of graph here is the comparison between frequencies, between the first 10% of sessions and the last 10% of sessions. You can see here overall changes in amplitude of certain frequencies. Uh, for example, a nice increase in calm alpha during relaxation response of this client over the course of the training between the first 10% and the last 10%. 
of training sessions. And then you could also see a reduction in high beta between the first 10% and the last 10% of sessions, which can be interpreted as a reduction in anxiety over the course of the training. Another one of the graphs here shows session average frequencies in signal interference over time. Notice that nice increase in alpha towards the end of the training. This might be variable from client to client and it really takes coupling it with the subjective data that I showed you before to shape the discussion about how they are doing. There are a few more graphs that can be generated like this one here to show zone and deep zone. These are mind lift specific parameters that show you how well you were lining up all the frequencies during your sessions and getting into times of positive feedback and extended times of positive feedback. And you can add each one of these to a report that will be generated at the end that you can share with your client. Okay, I hope you enjoyed these updates in the excellent MindLift software program. If you are interested in becoming a provider or client, be sure to visit their website with the link in the description below. If you wanna do training specifically with me, head to www.techpersych.com coaching and apply. Talk to you soon.